I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty Mercedes GLE four fifty four Matic with bounce control. It's actually called free driving assist. Hit so me with it. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> so so it's it's built in low rider mode. Oh yeah, this is the most gangster thing I've ever experienced. This is so cool. And what is the point of this? So technically, you're only supposed to use this to get out of stuck situations like in the sand or in the snow or yes. in the mud. And uh, you could also drive around under 10 kilometers an hour for a little bit, and it's like the best. Yeah, so we're currently driving around. It probably looks pretty funny on camera, and this is actually the best feature ever. So let's get into it. Let's start with horsepower and torque. Do we have to, or could we just keep bouncing? Horsepower and torque will bounce later. All right, fine. 362 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque from a 3-liter inline-six turbo. So we are showing video of the 350, but right now we're in the 450 because we were at the event for it. Yeah, so when we drove the 350 earlier today, it's got less horsepower, and I actually think it's underpowered. So if you're going to get either of these, I will straight up recommend the 450 right away. But we also got to do a lot of off-roading with and without all of the different off-road options that this one has that the other one didn't. And it was held by the guys who did the AMG Winter Sporting Event. Yeah. And this year, they're getting E63S wagons, not sedans, because we requested it. So they ordered it. All because of us, there's wagons at Winter Drifting next year. So check out the footage from when we went. If you can go, sign up. It's literally the most fun I've ever had driving. It's the coolest thing ever. So I'm actually going to pull us out of this free driving assist, and I'm going to put us into individual wheel control. So what that is, is you can pretty much set it up like if you're on air ride, which you are. Yep. This is actually the coolest thing ever. So I can individually control the front left, front right, rear left, rear right. I don't know of another car that has this actually. But you can't really drive fast with it. No, you can't at all. This isn't meant for like low rider type stuff. This is meant for like actual off-roading. But if you're in a parking lot, you can low rider it. And what's cool is that you can also have it lower and raise when you open the doors and stuff. This is a really advanced air suspension system. It's so freaking cool. That's probably the best part, but it is optional and it is pretty expensive. Yeah, so the e-active body control feature by itself costs $6,900. That's a lot of money. Worth it. So worth it. Oh, it's definitely worth it. If you want to impress everybody, I don't even want to think what this is going to cost to replace if it were to ever break. But can you get it on the 350? No, you can't. And there's an upcoming 53 coming up, which I don't think you can get it on either. Exactly. So you have to get on the 450. Okay. Can we talk more gimmicks that this car has? Absolutely. This is all about gimmicks. But first, get back into bounce control. Okay. Free driving assist and start. Go ahead, Yuri. Curve mode. Yeah, what's that? When you take a turn, it'll lean the car in the other direction so that it doesn't feel like you're like moving around. So basically it leans into the corners like a motorcycle instead of away from the corners like a traditional suspension system would. I, I think it's like three degrees or something and it's not the easiest to notice at all times, but if you kind of look at one side and along the horizon, you can see it moving. Yeah, and if you see behind the car in front of it, I really do notice it because I see like the corners lifting and the corners not lifting and stuff like that. So I notice a huge difference with it and it's a little weird to get used to at first, but once you get used to it, it's the coolest feature ever next to this crazy bounce mode, which we, should we do the whole review in this bounce mode? At least most of it. Okay, fine. So curve mode is actually one of the drive modes. So we do have individual off-road, curve, eco, comfort, sport, and sport plus. When you put in sport plus, it actually kind of enables curve mode. So it doesn't really lift corners of it, but it makes it totally flat. It's really noticeable. And I would probably just leave it in sport plus for most of the time, unless you really want to feel the curves. So if we're explaining how those modes work, the way you get into the bouncy mode is by being in off-road mode and under 10 kilometers an hour, and then you click the suspension button and then you can get into it. Same with the wheel moving mode. But then what's the next mode that we like? What this looks like driving over speed bumps at 60 kilometers an hour and 100 kilometers an hour. So we've got a little camera up there and it detects things in the road so it can adapt to bumps. Not as well for potholes, but for speed bumps, you just fly right over it. Yeah, so it's called road surface scan. So it levels out the entire body and it's just looking for road imperfections. And like Yuri said, it's better for bumpy surfaces. So we tested that out. And the way we tested it out, going 60 and 100 and using a cup of coffee water. Yeah, and how did that work out? It splashed a lot less in the mode, <laughs> over 60. It's freaking cool. Yeah. I, I'm sorry I keep saying it's freaking cool, but this car is actually like 
There's so much tech in here. It's comfort gimmick central. There's also some tech problems, but we'll get to that later. Yes, yes, yes. So as much as I want to continue driving in free driving assist, I think for the first time, I actually don't want to put it in Sport Plus, but I will. Okay, let's right. talk about the drive. So let's go a little bit faster and put this in Sport Plus. All right, Sport Plus and send. It's not bad, it's got a lot of torque. Yeah, it's like the speed you would expect for a Mercedes SUV this size. Exactly, so earlier I said the 350 is not enough. This is just right. This is the right amount of power and this one actually has EQ boost. So it actually gets a little bit more horsepower and a lot more torque for a short amount of time. So it'll actually give you an extra 21 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque, which is quite a bit. And it'll also coast to lights and stuff like that. So overall, it's a pretty cool thing. And we do have a nine-speed auto. It shifts pretty smooth. I have no problems with the transmission or the drivetrain in general. But this particular one, the 450, has variable all-wheel drive. So most of the time, it's actually sending 100% of the power to the rear wheels, and only when it sends a slip, it sends power to the front, which is really cool because it's like a fully rear bias system. And the 350 was 50-50 distribution. Yeah, all the time, permanent all-wheel drive. And then I think the 53 is gonna be mostly rear. Exactly. So and that, like that's even cool. more rear, like, yeah, this is 100% rear to the back all the time, but it'll just kind of distribute torque differently. And for off-roading, the 350 and the 450 were both great, but the 450 was like a little bit extra because it's got all those cool features. Oh, it was a lot extra. Like, you don't need it, at least on the course that we were on, but it was just so much more fun to have that control over everything. And this isn't really a handling type of SUV, so I'm just going to talk more about comfort and stuff like that. There is actually no body roll, so I will just say that flat out. So if you're in Sport Plus, it's kind of leveling itself all the time, which is really cool. And then we also tested curve control, which we mentioned earlier, but it's just, it's so crazy how flat or like extra unflat it makes it because it like throws it into the corners and no car that we've driven to date has ever done that. And the first car that does it, a freaking SUV, like yeah. what's with that? Probably got more room for electronics, that's why. But like visually when you see it, it's really cool, but it's like, kind of subtle if you're not like super good at looking for that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And you can even control the degree of curve mode that you like. But you can't do curve mode and sport plus. Curve mode is like its own drive mode. Yeah, sport plusy curve mode. Like it's it's weird cuz like yeah. but whatever. It, it works really really well. It really does. And since this does have the air suspension, the ride is just sublime. Like it's just so comfortable. I think this is more comfortable than the X5 that we drove. And it's also really quiet in here. Yeah, this is totally a luxury car because I guess it is the E class of SUVs because it's the GLE. Yeah, so if you people did not know that, the GLC is like the C sedan, GLE like the E sedan, and GLS like the S sedan. And that's why we've got those two lines in the headlights. Should we go over the looks? Let's go for it. Okay, the most striking feature of this is the rear window, how it's like the M old MLK or whatever. Yeah, the ML, yeah. Yeah, it looks so cool. I, I like it more and more, and I really like the beige color with the plastic cladding. I think just as much as I like this version. I'm actually shocked at how good the base model looks for this because I'm not upset with how the black plastic cladding looks because it's like a little bit of a wide body. Yeah, and this 450 has the AMG sports package, so it does have the pin grill. And then you can also get a blackout package as well for it. Which this one has. So back to the front end, you like the way it looks? I do like the way it looks. I don't love the way it looks, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it's not as menacing as like a GLS. Exactly. But it, it's a solid in the middle. Yeah, and I still think the XT6 from Cadillac actually looks better from the front than this. Yeah, but that doesn't bounce. It doesn't, no, but, no, no. But the XT6 has some awesome features that Mercedes doesn't have, which we'll talk about later. Side view. It's kind of regular old SUV. Yeah, so this one doesn't have those hard body lines that they had in the previous generation. It's like the new style where it's smooth at the top and a little bit of body line at the bottom. It looks pretty all right, but that beige color we had, I love that color. Really? For once, I think Mercedes beige and silver pops more than everything else. It kind of does. And what do you think of the wheels? I really like the wheels. Like all of the wheels really suit the cars very well. Yeah, and these ones look super nice. Like spinning nice and slow when you're going under 10 kilometers an hour while bouncing or dropping one side looks so wicked. And even the wheels we had on the 350 also look really good. And what are the Continental recommended tires for the GLE 450? The Continental Conti Sport Contact 5. So let's move on to the back end, starting with the taillights. Can we start with something else? The exhaust? Yeah, it's a solid filled exhaust tip. Yeah, so it's totally fake. And we got a muffler underneath. Both of them are fake. Yeah, I think it's a transitionary period where they have to wean people off exhaust tips. It's horrible. Yeah, but it looks all right. It looks fine. And you it's can't just... tell until you get super close. Yeah, exactly. I don't like that trickery. And now the tail lights, they're cool because they've got like a different outline that we haven't seen in Mercedes yet. Yeah, it's like they're, triangle stuff. They're kind of reminiscent of Pacifica tail lights to me. Okay. 
but I like, I really like them. It's a solid look. Yeah, I really like the back end of this. Overall, the taillights look great. And I guess that's pretty much it for looks. It is like pretty big. Yeah, it is pretty big. It's grown from the previous GLE model, and you can even get an optional third row for this, but which this particular one does not have. And the best part of that third row is they specifically say it's not designed for adults. So it's like you have realistic expectations for it. We barely fit back there. Yeah, we don't fit. If the person in the second row wants to be remotely comfortable, there's not a chance. But like you said, it's just for children in basically in emergencies. And they say that, which is the best part. Yeah, so let's get into this interior, but let's get you into the driver's seat. You're gonna do the thing, aren't you? Bounce control. There's a lot of people watching us uh, very confused right now. They're just impressed. All right, let's 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 start the show. <laughs> so I'm gonna start the interior bits off with the infotainment because it is the new MBUX that we had in the A-Class. If you're interested in that, watch those videos. We do a super deep dive into it, but we're gonna talk about some of like the particular stuff that really sucks. Yes, and the good stuff as well. Okay, first thing, the most important thing, they got rid of the rotary wheel, and now it's just a touchpad. The more time we spend with it, the more we hate it. I think what they did is they got rid of the scroll wheel, they added a touch screen, and they're kind of forcing you to just use it as a touch screen because this trackpad is very difficult and very distracting. I've been using both, but it's definitely a mix of both, and I can't just use one. When you try to do something, you really have to dig. You swipe your finger, you look, you look where it's going. When the rotary wheel, you could just turn it until it landed wherever you needed it in your peripherals, and then click down. Because there's just, there's too many settings, there's too many menus, there's too many options. Before it was just a simple kind of layout, yeah. now it's just all over the place. And it's cluttered, there's a lot more stuff everywhere and like a lot more graphics too and shortcuts and stuff like that. And it does have Hey Mercedes, but as we know, it doesn't always work. Yeah, so watch our A-Class video because we go very in depth. So I know you have some complaints about satellite radio, hit me with it. Okay, we do have tune mix, we do have rewinding, which is very nice. But to use everything, I still don't really know how. Like I think I need to click radio or I click home. Every time I try to scroll through, I go by it because I'm not used to this touchpad. And then when you go to your bookmarks, things move around too much. To rewind, I try to click left on these buttons and things just skip favorites. It's pretty much a whole mess of stuff. It is, it's just, it's very confusing. It's gonna take a lot of time to get used to. I was frustrated when I drove the X5 and it took me like five more BMWs to get used to it. I think that's the case with this. I think since they got rid of the rotary wheel, they want you to use this as a touchscreen, but they left a trackpad, but Audi didn't. They did it the right way. They just got rid of all of it completely, so you had to use it as a touchscreen. Yeah, and it actually just works really well on Audis. I'm just like holding on to my old experiences with the Mercedeses that I loved so much. But at least this does have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so they do work. Yes, yeah, so Apple CarPlay doesn't go full widescreen like the older ones, but it goes kind of wide and stays in the middle and there's nice graphics on either side, which I think is a nice touch. But there are some really cool features. So if you swipe down to your themes, then you go to adventure and everything kind of goes in this off-road mode and your head-up display even changes too. Because when I start going off-road, I'm like, ah, uh, themes, boom. And then you can see your angle and everything like in your gauges. It shows all the angles and stuff on the big screen. It's so convenient. And like the other Mercedes, the gauges are very customizable, but I think this shortcut helps if you like program ahead of time so you don't have to dig into like a sticky situation. Yeah, exactly, and you can set your own personal theme as well. And none of the gauges are laggy or anything like that, so overall, I do like the system. I don't love it, and it'll just take a lot of time to get used to. But the thing is, like we're young people who use this stuff all the time, yeah. and we're used to it. I think it's older people who are the demographic who buy this, and I don't think they're gonna have an easy time at all. And Mercedes says they are done with the rotary wheel. It's just trackpad for the future which I think is the biggest mistake ever. There's not even an option. Like right now there is for some stuff in Europe. I'm not sure if it'll work because like Lexus was a nightmare and we spent a lot of time with that. I think once they transition to full touchscreens, it'll just be fine. And Acura was a nightmare too. I'm really worked up about it because it just ruins Mercedes for me. Let's move on. So we do have amazing 360 cameras in here, which we used for off-roading, which was really nice. Then we also have like parking assist and stuff too. What the GLE has that's similar to the e-cars that we drove is amazing ambient lighting. Yeah, it's actually the coolest feature probably in, in this interior. So what they did compared to the older ones, instead of having the glow kind of fade out from underneath, the LEDs are now visible. So your ambient lights are visible during the day all the time, at least a little bit. And they put them in all of the coolest spots. We have these grab handles. And then if you option the crazy speaker system, which we have, 
They actually light up right on top of the speakers. This pretty much destroys everyone for ambient lighting. This destroys everybody for an overall interiors, like the way that it looks. Okay, so now let's talk about how it looks around the gauge cluster. We have these vent-ish kind of things, which is also a vent right around it, which I think looks great. Yeah, I got a problem with the right vent because the left vent is an actual vent. The right vent just looks like a vent. It's just plastic. But not all of the left vent is a real vent. Exactly. So it, I, I think it looks great if you just like from the back seat, look at it. And then we got really nice open pour wood. We got nice white cream leather in here. Yeah, it's a very nice spec. And then when we drove one of them that had a nice wooden steering wheel as well. Yeah, like a matte wood, and which it was, was, and heated. It was heated. Yeah, that's cool. And the rest of the layout in here is very regular Mercedes. We do have a wireless charger and my big iPhone XR can fit on the wireless charger with a plug plugged into it. But this only has USB-C because they tried to make it future proof. Exactly, so shout out Android, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we got those little dongles so I can like adapt my thing to it. Yeah, and then we also have heated and cooled cup holders. And then what you can also get technology wise for the GLE, but we don't have in this one, there's a little camera that watches what your hand does and it helps make things easier and less distracting. So if you ask Mercedes to throw up your seat settings, if I reach for them as a passenger, my seat settings will light up and kind of glow bigger. And then if I reach for it as a driver, it'll know that I'm reaching for it. And what's cool is you've even got a motion like this, which triggers a programmable favorite from the passenger and driver side. So like we can go from sport mode to classic mode. It's pretty crazy. And then I asked the Mercedes guy if it does this to turn up the volume. Yeah. He's like, no, not a chance. No. <laughs> so I think the way Mercedes did it kind of works better than the way BMW did it personally. I think they're both cool approaches to it. And these seats are really comfortable. Like I've got no issues with this. I could do a road trip in these. And we've got the seat kinetics that kind of moves it around a bit every now and then. So like you don't have a hurt back from sitting in the same position. And we have heated and cooled seats in this particular model. And how's the back seat room? It's actually shockingly good. So much room. Yeah. It's so luxury. So I'm glad that they extended this thing because man, there's so much room back there. Yeah, and then uh, we should probably do the visor test. You probably should. Oh, oh man. Oh, Three, I saw two, it. One. Yes, and, and a double gimmick visor. Pass. I think this is the best passing visor of all time. Although the gimmick visor, like that's gonna let a lot of sun in that gigantic hole. I'm, I'm totally fine with this. This gets uh, th this, a full pass. It does. Plus a gimmick pass. This it does. Great job, Mercedes. And as for a small cup of coffee, it did fit earlier, but all we got right now is this Mercedes branded water. It tastes very German. <laughs> it fits just fine. And unfortunately, we don't have our boxes with us today. But here's a nice shot of the trunk and then the trunk with the seats down. And here's a nice shot of all the boxes. We love you guys at patreon.com slash straight pipes. Thank you guys for the box test patrons and everyone. And before we end it off with the price, this does have the usual Mercedes great driving assist, but it also has an under 60 kilometers an hour stop and go highway traffic mode. Yeah, so similar to BMW and kind of what everybody's doing now. But this doesn't like look at your eyes and let you take the wheels off forever, but it does modulate how it goes stopping and going a lot better. Yeah, so the way that they explained it was like, it'll do a better job of people trying to cut in front of you so you won't have to like adjust your distance as much. But the Genesis G90 still wins on all lane keep stuff. Yes, it does. Okay, ready for the price? Oh, I'm ready. Hit me with it. The 350 starts at $64,000. Canadian. The 450 starts at $72,000. And this is sitting at? $107,040. How did that happen? This has the e-active body control for $6,900. That's the bounce thing. Yep. On top of the air suspension, which also costs extra. And then we also have this $6,900 sound system in here. You just kind of keep checking boxes and this is almost fully loaded. Okay, you couldn't get this without the crazy suspension. I feel like you kind of can't, which is insane. And then seeing this speaker right there, I've never seen a speaker that looks so impressive and the way it lights up. I'm okay deleting that, but it is impressive. It's a lot of money. You're, I don't think most people are gonna spec it like this. You need to get at least the bouncing. You gotta get the bouncing. Like you have to, that's the best part of this whole SUV. And make sure you got a warranty for the rest of your life if you're gonna own this for the rest <laughs> of your life. Cause I don't know about that suspension, if, depending on how much you're gonna play with but it. But like when we were off-roading, it was so cool because you kind of bought out and then you lifted your way out of it exactly and like, with that suspension like it's great for getting yourself out of the sand we've all seen the clips yep but with the suspension you get a skid plate so if you start accidentally bouncing on rocks you'll be more fine everyone's gonna be impressed by it it's not like one gimmick where like you just kind of click it and like oh cool if you do it every parking lot where you've never met people everyone's gonna be impressed all the time I think the gimmick of the year. It is for it, it sure. It must be. Yeah, 100%. So let us know what you think of the GLE 450. Is bounce control the gimmick of the year or not? Are there any other SUVs that you think you'd take over this? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes and Teespring for cool shirts.
Yo, I'm wearing mine. <laughs>